Channel 10 News and simulcast on Rogers TV. It's time for our weekly chat with our entertainment and pop culture expert, Jill Clark. Hello, Jill. Hello, Mark. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Has it stopped raining yet? Uh, you know, I haven't noticed. Uh, I'm really? choosing to ignore it. You're just walking around just, blissfully ignorant about the weather and, that's, yeah, and that's just in a, in a positive headspace. And, I think so. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. For, uh, for Thursday, uh, I, I think it's a good a good way to be. Yeah. Just go through life as if the sun is always shining on you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, lots to talk about this mm-hmm. week, including season two of The Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. And uh, we had talked before about The Simpsons. Yes. And the character of Apu, mm-hmm. the um, convenience store owner. That's right. Who is voiced by uh, Hank Azaria, who is not East Asian. No. Not uh, either, but. Or South Asian, mm-hmm. and um, and there's a lot of people have issues with both the character and the fact that it's voiced by a white guy. Yeah. Um, and now Hank Azaria is saying he would he would be fine with stepping aside. Yeah. From, from voicing this character. Yeah. So we saw the response that was um, made by the creators of the show via an episode that aired a couple of weeks ago, which a lot of people felt very. Uh, left a lot of people, yeah, very lukewarm feelings about it because it really didn't address the problem. It just kind of said, hey, you know, we created this character 20 years ago when it wasn't that offensive and now it is. And so what are you going to do? And it was very flip and very dismissive. And what Frank would have, excuse me, what Hank Azaria has mm-hmm. done is he has come forward to say that not only would he be happy to step aside and, and no longer voice the character, but that he calls for more South Asian or any South Asian writers to be present in the Simpsons writing room, which I think to me looks like progress because it's very easy to say, you know, yeah, things are uh, not easy to change and perceptions and and things like that change over the years, but we're not just going to eliminate a character or we're not, you know, that would be going too far. But what Hank Azaria is saying, he's saying there is something that we can do. There are concrete actions that we can take to make this right. And we'd also talked previously about uh, The Crown, about how Claire uh, Foy wasn't making as much money as her counterpart. Yeah. And and I think a lot of the response to that was similar. Well, what happened happened. Moving forward, we'll do the right thing. Well, why not just retroactively pay her what she would have been owed? And why not just right. get a new voice for Apu or maybe put some South Asian writers in the writer's room to make it more representative? I think what's happened here is that Hank Azaria has taken a public platform on the Stephen Colbert show to say there are concrete and, um, you know, tangible ways that we can write this. And I think that that's great to hear. And I was really uh, impressed, far more impressed with his response than the response Hmm. from the show. And then there's the other thing, like we talked about the last time this came up, which is that I'm not sure anybody watches The Simpsons anymore. That's the funny thing. I mean, obviously somebody's watching it because it's still on TV, but even as a big Simpsons fan, I have not watched a new episode of the show probably in 10 years. No. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's still being made. Yep. So, you know, and it's if, still relevant and it's still part of our culture. And relevant is maybe a strong word. No, I mean, what's what this issue is still relevant. Exactly. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not absolutely. the show. The, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the how they deal with this issue is mm-hmm. is probably more topical than the show is. Yeah, right absolutely. Now. And I think that yeah. a lot of new show creators are looking to um, be as inclusive as possible. And so why not be a model for that? Everybody knows The Simpsons. Everybody knows that creative team. So if they can take those tangible steps towards writing something that was wrong, then I think that that would be a great example to show for making TV in the future. Yeah. Season two, uh, and by the way, uh, b- before we talk about The Handmaid's Tale, mm-hmm. there are, I mean, The Simpsons are just one example. There yes. are all kinds of problems with mainstream television in the United States, in North America, and the characters and how they're depicted and Absolutely. all of that, right? I mean, yes. this is just one example Oh yes, of many examples to do with gender roles, mm-hmm. uh, to do with ethnic stereotyping, all of that kind of stuff. Absolutely. This so, is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, the tip of the tip of the iceberg, Yeah, for sure. And, and it comes back to the fact that for a long time, it's changing, but for mm-hmm. a long time, Hollywood has been dominated by a certain subset of yeah, the population. Absolutely. White guys have been writing most of the TV shows. Yes. So, of course, the shows are going to reflect that. And we're showing, we are showing signs of incremental progress. We have shows like Blackish and Fresh Off the Boat, which depict accurate 
um, stories of uh, minorities in America, and they are written by those minorities, and they are acted by those minorities, and they are created by those minorities. Yeah. So there are these baby steps that are happening for sure. But as you said, it's it's going to take a long, long time to kind of scrub ourselves clean of uh, yeah this this white male dominated world. All right, season two of The Handmaid's Tale yes. has started, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, did you watch season one? I did. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I watched it too, mm-hmm. and I have to say, I think it is incredibly well done. Yes. Uh, I found, though, mm-hmm. that it was difficult to watch, mm-hmm. and so for, for that reason, I didn't enjoy it. It was so disturbing that I mm-hmm. didn't enjoy, particularly the first half of season one. Mm-hmm. Is the second half there was there was a little bit more scope of hope and maybe a little tiny light at the end of the tunnel. Right. But the first half was depressing, which meant that you know my wife and I would look at each other and say, "Do we want to watch <laughs> another Handmaid's Tale?" Through, yeah. yeah. Like, is it we're going to go to bed feeling kind of depressed about yes. the future of the world? Yes. Um, and there is this kind yeah. of bleakness fatigue Absolutely. that you can feel, and and that happens with other shows too. I know a lot of people who have gotten show divorced from shows like The Walking Dead because it just gets so dark and so bleak mm. and you really do feel like you're putting yourself through something just to watch yeah. it. Um, something I love about The Handmaid's Tale is that the cinematography is out of this world. They create these beautiful, beautiful tableaus. They have a really fantastic way of using color um, and angles and it's very much similar yeah. to a, a Breaking Bad in that way that they really do have a very intelligent way of filming the show which I find is its own reward yeah. um, to be able to see these kind of beautiful images that are conjured out of such dark bleakness. Um, and mostly that, shot in Toronto and Hamilton mostly too. Mostly shot in Toronto. Uh, yeah. they, uh, the, the, the second episode of the, of the second season was shot in Uxbridge, Ontario. And uh, yeah, so it, it's locally shot, but they find a way to make it uh, just stunningly, uh, visually yeah. stunning. Yeah, there are absolutely. websites, by the way, that you can go to where they'll say, okay, you know, in that scene when this happened, this is where it was in yeah. Toronto. You know, it's kind of cool. No, it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're in this kind of neo-golden age of television. Absolutely. What I like to call prestige television. So television shows that have an extremely high production value, um, shows like The Crown, shows like Handmaid's Tale, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, um, that almost have a, a, a cinematic quality Absolutely. to them. Absolutely. Because they have si- such, such high production value um, and budgets. And so now we're seeing, I mean, if this were maybe five 10, 15 years ago, somebody like Elizabeth Moss, who plays the lead character, would have been snatched up uh, into the world of cinema, and we would have only seen her in movies going forward, probably after Mad Men. But now, these big stars are being uh, taken to the world of television and staying there. Mm -hmm. Because this is how we are consuming entertainment these days, and this is where I think the most interesting stories are coming to is through this medium. Yeah. So I think we're watching this incredibly interesting shift away from movies and into the world of television. And I think that that form of television mm-hmm. is the highest form of storytelling in our time right now. Absolutely. And it makes it makes so much more sense and when you see for example Big Little Lies uh, instead of becoming a, it's a very popular book. Yes. Instead of it being made into a movie, it's made into a television show. Yes. And it makes so much more sense because you can't cram a 400 page novel into an hour and 45 minute movie. And what's the biggest complaint that people have when a book gets turned into yeah. a movie? Oh, well, they oh, missed they this part this or they, this yeah. character got eliminated. And so yeah. now we can, however, the, the, the other side of that coin is that Big Little Lies was one book. It was one story. It was beautifully told, beautifully recreated as a series, but was very successful. And my concern is that now they're saying, oh, well, let's do a second season. Sure. And it's the same thing with The Handmaid's Tale. Now season two has the, the, yeah, the, it goes, the source it's go uh, in material yeah, uh, but written by Margaret went. Atwood um, uh, ended. And so now it's going to go beyond that scope. Same thing happened with Game of Thrones. So you do have to be a little bit careful that you don't become a victim of your own success yeah. and that sometimes something can be created as a mini series to say we're going to do one season of this and then we're never going to do it again. And I feel sometimes... Uh, they can lack that restraint to not want to develop sure. into something into a Although you can use it as a launching off point to to keep telling the story that yes. uh, beyond what the book told yes. and, and keep going with it. Yeah, uh, as long as the writing yeah. keeps up with that, 
Another example of that is a book called Sharp Objects, mm-hmm. which I've read mm-hmm. by Gillian Flynn, who mm-hmm. also wrote Gone Girl. Yes. And Sharp Objects is being made into a TV series starring Amy Adams that is going to start on HBO in July. Mm-hmm. Similar to Big Little Lies, where it'll be a series instead yeah. of just a uh, one-off movie. Yeah, Amy and Adams being pulled back exactly. from the world of, uh, of cinema into television. Yeah. And I think uh, from an actor's standpoint, the lifestyle of shooting a, a television show is much more comfortable than, than doing movies because yeah. movies you're being pulled you know in all these different directions whereas a TV show you get to stay on set for you know weeks at a time you're guaranteed to have the same job uh, sure. on an ongoing basis well would so. you want 20 million bucks for one movie that may or may not be successful and maybe some of your salary or your compensation is tied to whether the movie sells a lot of tickets mm-hmm. or would you want a you know a potentially five to seven year deal with HBO to make TV shows for the next you know, for exactly. the next few years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it, it definitely it works out for everybody. So I, yeah. I, I, I love, I mean, God bless television. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, this new medium. Yeah, the way it's going. absolutely. Yeah. All right. We'll be talking more about it in the weeks to come. Jill, thank absolutely. you. Thanks for having me, Mark. Jill Clark, entertainment and pop culture expert with us every Thursday on Ottawa Today. Coming up next, the Power Lunch. There's always more to the story. Ottawa Today with Mark Sutcliffe. We'll be right back on 1310 News and Rogers TV.